So now we will get into what is called the quantum model of an atom. And uh, for that, you need to know a little bit about what is called the quantum theory, all right? So until now, what you know about the atom is that uh, the nuclear model, which is that the nucleus is in the middle, electrons are all around, and there's a lot of empty space. But here we are going to get a little bit deeper, okay, into where those electrons actually exist. And to know that, you really need to understand the atom a little bit more. You need to understand about physics a little bit more. So that's what this chapter is about. It's short and sweet, but uh, it is kind of like the, you know, one of the foundation bricks that we lay for understanding the quantum model of an atom, okay? So first I need you to understand the wave nature, okay? What is a wave? A wave is anything that goes in, in cycles like this. So I've drawn a wave here for you. And a wave has three features, okay? So one is the wavelength and the wavelength is one cycle up, one cycle down, okay? One of those crests down, up and down. So all of it, that is called a wavelength. It is given by the symbol lambda, okay? So that's given to you here. Then you have something called an amplitude, which is the height of that crest. So that amplitude will be the same here also, okay, for a given wavelength. And then there is something called frequency. What is frequency? It is the um, number of wavelengths that can pass through in a second, okay? Frequency is probably something that you are a little bit more aware of as in the uh, units of it, which is hertz, okay? So uh, frequency is given in nu, and that's this, uh, this symbol, but this is how it's pronounced, okay, so new. So you have three things going on here, amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. So these things are related to each other, okay, in a way, and that relationship is given to you here, that the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency, okay, which means that the larger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. So what does that mean for us, okay, that the larger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency, it means that if you have a large wavelength, so for example, something like this, if you have a large wavelength, in one second, you will have less of those. Let's say this was one second, okay? If you had a smaller wavelength, and let's say this is still one second, so you can see that in one second, you passed a lot more of those wavelengths, and so, this is an inverse relationship. The larger the wavelength, then the frequency is not that much. It's smaller, okay? So understand that relationship. It's an important one to understand. Also because remember when we talk about proportionality, then it's easy for us to understand how things are related to each other, okay? But then of course we also need to uh, remove that proportionality, okay? Which we are going to. Now, one of the other things that we need to talk about is energy in a wavelength. And so uh, all the radiation that is around us, that is actually all um, in wave form. And that was kind of understood about 100, 100 or so years ago. And so everything about us is in wavelength form. And so we know that we get energy also from there. And it turns out that frequency is directly proportional to energy. And so we need to understand that also, okay, in there. And that's something that we're going to talk about. So uh, it has, you know, a little bit to do with chemistry. In fact, I mean, it does have a lot to do with chemistry, but it's a little bit physics also for us, okay? So three things, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and the relationship is that the wavelength and frequency is inversely proportional to each other, and frequency and energy are directly proportional to each other. So how do we understand this? To remove that proportionality between the wavelength and the frequency, it means that wavelength times frequency is equal to a constant. And if that is a constant, what is that constant? And that constant for us is the speed of light, okay? So this is our equation then. C is equal to lambda nu. And C, we know speed of light is constant, okay? It is this number over here, meters per second. Wavelength is given in meters and frequency is, of course, given per second because it's the number of wavelengths per second, right? So it's, it's a uh, per second kind of a, a, a unit. You can give hertz also. There are different units for, uh, for frequency. We're going to use uh, per second here, okay? So now you understand the wave properties, okay? That uh, the inverse relationship and the energy, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. 
So first of all, just a few problems over here regarding uh, the relationship in a wave, because I do ask you this, okay? So how are things related to each other? So what is the relationship between frequency and wavelength? It's an inverse relationship. What is the uh, relationship between wavelength and in, uh, energy? That is also inverse, okay, relationship, because frequency is directly proportional to energy not wavelength okay all right so wavelength and amplitude there is no relationship between them because amplitude could be anything okay which is the height of the crest it could be anything frequency and energy is a direct relationship and then finally energy and amplitude there is no relationship okay by the way when you turn up the volume on your uh, radio or on your um, you know pods uh, then that is actually amplitude okay you're not changing the wavelength you're not changing the frequency if you changed either of those properties the sound waves that are going in your ear would sound different okay but the only thing that is different is the volume and that is amplitude okay so here is a calculation you can do do i have you do calculations i usually don't okay but if there is anything in your homework or such uh, then you can actually easily do calculations using um, this formula. So if this is a wavelength uh, given to you in nanometers and you're asked the frequency, okay? Remember C is the constant, which is the speed of light, okay? And so uh, lambda then is equal to, uh, you know, sorry, not lambda. Uh, what are we calculating here? The lambda is given to us. We're calculating the frequency. This, so that's wrong over there. So this should be nu. Um, and so nu is then equal to, let me go ahead and write that. So nu is equal to then the speed of light over the um, wavelength. Okay. And that's how you will get the wave uh, frequency. Okay. So the nature of light was studied by scientists because we needed to understand how um, and not we as in me, but, um, you know, back then, 200 years ago. And uh, try to understand as to how the light is traveling. And it turns out that light travels in waveform. Okay, and how do you figure that out? For that, you need to go a little bit deeper into studying the waves, which are we are not doing over here. But diffraction is really the way to figure out if something is actually traveling in waves or not. Okay, then there was another concept, and that's the concept of photoelectric effect. And what that is, there is a minimum amount of energy that's required to remove an electron, okay, from the surface of a metal. So, which means that you need to have some amount of energy in order to eject an electron, okay, from a metal. So, which means that, you know, electrons can be given out even just by using light, okay? And so, all of this kind of becomes an important thing um, because you need to understand, you know, uh, how the energy is working in light because there must be some energy coming in light. That's why the electron is going, right? So, we need to understand that aspect. So before I get into that aspect of how everything is related, let me kind of talk to you a little bit about the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, electromagnetic spectrum is something that we all encounter one way or another. It's the waves that actually come from the universe, okay, from the radiation, from energy source. For us, it's the sun. And so all the energy that's coming from there, when it hits the Earth's atmosphere, it kind of splits into many radiations. So I've given you here uh, a little bit about the description of this, but here is a picture. Okay, of the electromagnetic radiation. So I'm just going to talk about this one over here. And so we distribute the electromagnetic spectrum because as soon as it hits the Earth's atmosphere, it kind of distributes out into a different kind of uh, or, or many regions, I would say, just like you can see a rainbow, right? Otherwise, uh, if without the water, without the radiation, you can't see the rainbow. It's the same thing here, except this rainbow is kind of invisible. OK, so you have all of these radiations there. So what are the radiations that come from um, the uh, radiation of the sun, which is called the cosmic radiation? So the cosmic radiation gives radio waves, microwaves, infrared spectrum. Then there is a visible region right there in the middle. There is ultraviolet, then there's x-rays and gamma rays. So they have all of these things that are coming in the electromagnetic spectrum. So what is this going on over here? Okay, so first of all, when it was found out that all the energy is traveling in waves, 
it means that all of this is also traveling in waves, all right? And if something has a wave, it has to have a frequency, okay? So here is the description of the frequency and the wave given to you in like one little picture, all right? So here is the wavelength. It's a large wavelength and the frequency is small. Remember, it's an inverse relationship. Here the frequency is really large and the wavelength is really small. What is the wavelength again? It is the crest up and crest down, okay? So a wavelength would be this. All right, so this wavelength is much bigger than this one, right? This is much smaller. So here is the little description for me uh, or for you. Um, and the wavelength is decreasing as you go towards the right hand side and the frequency is increasing as you go to the right hand side. So radio waves, for example, have the largest wave, whereas gamma radiation have the smallest wavelength. Gamma radiation have the highest frequency and radio waves have the lowest frequency. For that reason, radio waves were the first ones to be used in the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we can't say that this was discovered. I mean, this was already there, right? So I guess it was discovered. Um, and so radio waves were the first ones to be used or discovered from the electromagnetic spectrum. And now we use every aspect of this, okay? We use the radio waves for radio, microwave for cooking, and, you know, doing any kind of energy um, reactions. Infrared radiation is uh, the heat that you feel from the sun. Infrared you might also know from um, the night vision goggles and whatnot. Visible spectrum is all the colors that you see. That's also the rainbow that you see and that's the only thing that's visible to us okay everything all the other radiation is not visible to us ultraviolet radiation now is getting to be a little damaging and you have heard about this that oh put your sunscreen on because you know what there is uv radiation out there x-rays is really going to be harmful for you because x-rays as you know even go through your body okay so if you're going to go for an x-ray they will protect all the other parts of your body uh, so that x-rays go only where they need to go okay and gamma radiation definitely is very very harmful so something is happening right and we said that as the frequency is increasing the energy is also increasing right so here you can see that the damaging effect of radiation increases as you go towards gamma radiation which is also high frequency low wavelength okay so that's your electromagnetic spectrum and yes i kind of need you to know that so then comes Max Planck. Okay, now that you understand the uh, wavelength, you understand the um, electromagnetic spectrum, you understand the energy aspect of it, how wavelength and frequency and energy are all related to each other. Well, Max Planck actually kind of came up with uh, a theory, and that theory is that the energy that is coming from the radiation, right? The energy, how is the energy coming? That's what Max Planck wanted to find out. And he said that it is coming in discrete quantities called quanta, okay? And quanta are little packets of energy. And what that packet of energy is, that packet of energy is traveling in waves, okay? So we know energy is coming from radiation. How is that energy traveling? that energy is traveling in waves. So you can imagine sitting by the beach watching the waves and you know that as soon as you remove the water, there is no wave, okay? So which means that the waves and the water is kind of connected to each other in the sense that if you have water, they will travel in waves. If you have waves, they need the water. So it's kind of related to each other. That's kind of what we're talking about, but we're talking about energy now. So energy is traveling in small packets called quanta, and then it is traveling in waveform. Okay, so what does that mean for us? It means that if you have a waveform like this, the quanta is like the small packet of energy. Okay, that's going over here. So now you can understand how energy is related to frequency, right? So if the high, if there is high frequency, then you'll have more packets of these energy. If you have a low frequency, 
this is low frequency, then you don't have that much energy. So radio waves, for example, you know, they don't damage anything. They don't harm anything. However, as soon as you get towards ultraviolet radiation, where you have higher frequency, now you're going to have more quanta coming through. So you'll have higher energy coming through, right? So frequency was directly proportional to energy. So what happened with Max Planck is that he was able to connect these two together. Okay, and he was able to introduce a constant because as soon as you remove the proportionality symbol, you introduce a constant. So that constant is called the Planck's constant and that is given in joules. Now this is a very small number, right? If you look at this one, it's a very small number. So 10 to the negative 34, but it is still appreciable, okay? That you have energy coming in the wavelength because you know these frequencies are very high in the wavelengths, very small. So that energy can be a lot and you know it, okay? You go out there and you feel it, okay? So that energy is coming. And so that is the quantum theory. So what this did actually for the entire study of waves is it completely or light I should say not waves it for the study of light is it's completely changed it so now this is called the dual nature of light which is that light has wave properties as well as particle properties okay and that particle is quanta okay so it's not like particle as in like a proper dust particle or something okay but that particle is the quanta that we talk about so that's the dual nature, okay? So here's another problem, okay, dealing with um, the energy. So now you can actually mix up two equations because here if you're calculating the energy uh, of a particular wavelength, you need to first find frequency. And once you find frequency, then you can find the energy of the photon, okay, at that given uh, wavelength. So that's kind of how uh, this works, okay, with the equations. Now again, it might be in your homework, um, not anywhere else. So that's it. As I said, this was, I was going to keep it short and sweet. Just explain to you about the dual nature of light. Okay. In here.